So Intel finally chose a new CEO. And it's the guy who's already been doing the job. This is the guy who took over when Intel uh, a year ago pushed out a guy for screwing his employees and selling all of his shares right before Spectre melt and Meltdown came out, which is hilarious, right? Like, that guy's going to get sued at some point. But, you know, what I found interesting about this new CEO is he doesn't want to do the job for more than one to two years, and he's going to still get immense pay, like $5 million a year, $30 million just up front in Intel stock, and a private jet, an amazing golden parachute when he wants to leave. You know, why is he demanding this? And it's because he's demanding this because he knows Intel's reckoning happens in six months from now. Six months from now. Now, the second link is Adored's second follow-up video to his Ryzen leak, where he basically skewers, I think, and, and will be vindicated. Um, all, the tech to, all the tech reviewers uh, and mainstream tech sites that said there's no way his leak can be true. Well, his leak is going to be true. Everyone I've talked to in the industry, it's true. AMD is going to have a 16-core, 5 gigahertz processor or, or higher, maybe 5.2 gigahertz for five to six hundred dollars. They're going to have one fifty dollar eight cores that compete with the 9900K. Um, well, using half the energy. This is Intel's reckoning. But why hasn't reality caught up with Intel's shareholders? The price, the stock's still going up. Why are people still shorting AMD, even though they've revolutionized how you design processors? And why are so many fanboys and mainstream tech sites just, that's what this video is about. When does reality catch up with everyone? And to answer this question, uh, and it's, it, it takes a long time, by the way, let's go down and take a trip down memory lane. So in 2006, Intel launched the Core 2 series, and it blew everything out of the water. Very similar to Bulldozer. This is the analogy I'm making. Uh, I'm sorry, very similar to Ryzen 1000. So... Core 2 comes out, Pentium's obsolete, top to bottom. The extreme versions are weaker than a mid to low range, uh, low end Core 2 processor. It's the same with Ryzen 1000. I mean, $100 Ryzen chips are a better choice than <laughs> the 200 watt, 5 gigahertz pile drivers. It's just gone. Old, they're gone. They're completely obsolete, right? And yet, Core 2, well, getting glowing reviews, like Ryzen 1000 got glowing reviews, it didn't get the reviews that you would expect. Like, to be fair, you should expect when something like that happens, reviews that say, update your PC now, don't care if it's only a year old, and the competition is dead in the water. And you didn't see that. You saw people gripe over 10% performance losses in gaming if it's Ryzen or in the Core 2 series, there's a lot of reviews that complain that they never were at four gigahertz. You know, why is it clocked lower than the Pentium chips? Even though it performs twice as well, they get hung up on these just useless stats that don't, it's a number. It doesn't matter if it's one gigahertz, if it outperforms the competition, you know? And, and back then, AMD could still compete. They had Phenom 2s come out. They were still good. Don't think I'm just shitting on AMD here. I, I love their Phenom 2s and Athlon 2 series. Budget gaming were excellent. And you even had some of like the Phenom 2 Black Editions where they competed very well while using less energy at idle than the um, Core i7s and the 800 and 900 series from Intel. So, so AMD wasn't dead back then. And Intel wasn't dead when Ryzen 1000 came out. They were able to respond. But to anyone paying attention, you could see the writing was on the wall. If AMD continues at this rate, or back then if Intel continues at this rate, the competition will be dead in five years. And so then things continued. And five years later, Sandy Bridge comes out. And the reviews are even less interesting than the Core 2 dual reviews. They say things like, oh, they finally got above 4 gigahertz, but the performance uplift is only 50%. You know, completely ignoring the fact that they were now using half the energy again and that AMD had nothing to respond with. You know, and, and that's what I'm preparing people for. I believe that Ryzen 3000 coming in a few months is going to be AMD Sandy Bridge moment where everyone looks back and goes, oh my God, that's when everything changed for sure. That's when Intel died for a few years. And just prepare yourself mentally for people not realizing it at the time. And now I'm going to go over AMD stock price. Let me type in here, AMD stock price. 
Right now it's doing very well. But if you look at the five year history, it's very interesting, right? Uh, well, actually you have to go back even longer than that. I'm getting so old. So if you go to like 2009, you have to remember there was the dot-com bubble that affected Intel and AMD. So you probably ignore everything until 2007, 2008. If you look back then, you had AMD's stock price continuing to go up even when they were clearly behind Intel in performance. They could compete, right? But they were overall behind, overall. And then in around 2010, they're at about $9 a share, right? You have to remember they also split their stocks. It's like $18 before that. But you have AMD at like $9 a share. And then 2011 Sandy Bridge comes out. But AMD's stock price only goes down like 30%, even though they were blown out of the water. So expect that with Intel to expect Intel to take a hit when Ryzen 3000 comes out, but not take a gigantic hit, relatively speaking, for how screwed they are. And then, and this is where it becomes surprising to people who forget, later that year, Bulldozer comes out. And everyone's like, that's when AMD stock dropped to $2, right? No. When Bulldozer came out, AMD stock bounced back up to about where it was in Sandy Bridge came out, which is absolutely insane. And so I'm saying expect that when Intel launches whatever their response to Ryzen 3000 is at the end of this year. Um, and then it's finally when Ivy Bridge came out that AMD stock died. And that's because it became abundantly clear how bad it finally had caught up with investors, how bad Bulldozer was. And that AM and that Intel wasn't gonna stop. Every year they're coming out with better stuff, and I, and that's when reality is gonna catch up with Intel fanboys and Intel um, shareholders and people shorting AMD. And that's not gonna be till 2020. So I'm just saying, that's what this video is about. Reality will catch up with everyone. It's still gonna be a year from now. And now I want to mentally prepare you for what's happening. In a few months, AMD is going to launch a lineup where their low end defeats Intel's high end and where their high end defeats Intel's Halo server chips. Um, we already have a video of AMD demonstrating one Ryzen 3000 Epic chip defeating two $10,000 per chip Xeons while using less energy than one of them. And yet Intel's stock price is going up. See, it takes a while for reality to set in. Until it exists, you have a lot of people on Wall Street who go, well, I want to see the proof. They just can't believe it. So that's going to happen this summer. But Intel's going to say, oh, get ready. We got 10 nanometer coming and we're going to hit them hard. And those 10 nanometer chips are going to be laptop only. Calling it now, you can hold me to my word. Laptop only later this year. And if you go and look carefully at their earnings calls, they always never quite confirm what it is. It's very funny for people who notice patterns well. Like, like look how they never quite say what they're releasing. May, they will mass launch 10 nanometer, but it will be just a handful of uh, chips on laptop that might not even be much better than their 14 nanometer chips. But they'll be able to claim they didn't lie. And what will come to desktop? Uh, the rumor is dual ring bus 14 nanometer chips are coming. And what you can expect is 10 to 14 core um, dual die chips. So what they'll do is basically take two 9900Ks, disable the least efficient core in both of them, and then, as Intel would say, glue them together. And if you're gaming, I'm guessing the game will only use one of the seven core ring buses running at like 5.1 gigahertz. And background tasks, we'll use all the other ones. And then if you're rendering, of course, it doesn't matter. You'll use all 14 cores. And this will be a Intel's bulldozer. Intel's bulldoze, bulldozer chips are coming this year. Mark my words. And there will be people that make these ridiculous arguments like, oh, and this super specific task, it beats it. And it's only a little more expensive than AMD. Oh, who cares if this uses 200 watts or 150 watts and AMD uses 95 watts? It's still stronger and it's still at this insert, you know, I don't know, decompressing wind zip use case. It's twice as powerful. So Intel's still in charge. And then what's going to happen is slowly people will realize, oh my God, Intel's making weaker chips that use double the energy and they charge more for them. This is not going well. This is not going well. And then expect mid or early next year, 
maybe quarter three in AMD's Ivy Bridge. Um, and this will probably come about at the end of 2020. And this is going to be not a, like, think of Ivy Bridge, right? Not a massive performance increase, 5 to 10% overall, like 5% IPC increase, maybe slightly higher clocks. But they're going to die shrink their IO die to probably, if I had to guess, they, they say it's either 7 nanometer or, if you ask me, it's probably going to be Global Foundry's 12 nanometer non-FinFET, which actually performs pretty close to TSMC's 7 nanometer as long as you don't need high clocks. And you don't need high clocks for an IO die. So, and that will lower perform, uh, lower power usage in half. So add another 10% performance, cut power usage in half. And this is when you'll have the Ivy Bridge situation. AMD will have 16 core chips that use probably about 65 watts competing with Intel, destroying Intel 70, uh, 150 watt chips. And that is when Intel stock price will crash and people realize, oh my God, this is insane. AMD has laptop, has mid-range laptop chips that are blowing Intel's 200 watt fuel sucking uh, monster chips out of the water. So that was the point of this video, outlining my thoughts on all of these leaks, um, which ones I think are true, and also where I think this is going and how long it's gonna take for people to realize AMD's in charge now. The last thing I will touch on is where I think Intel will compete again. And it's gonna be a while, guys, and I don't want it to be. What I want to happen is AMD to kill Intel this year and then twist the knife hard next year and maybe one more year. Now, a lot of people say, why would you want that? And it's like, you want AMD to make a ton of money the next two years so they can put that into R&D and make up for a decade of living on life support. You want AMD to become half as big, almost as big as Intel in the next three years so that they can continue to compete when Intel hits back. Because Intel will probably hit back in 2023 with legitimate five or seven nanometer chips that are on a good manufacturing process that are designed by Jim Keller. You know, you look at Jim Keller, he joined AMD in 2012 and it was 2017 when Ryzen came out. So he joined Intel, I believe, mid-2018. And so it's 2023 is when Intel's gonna strike back. You want AMD to hit them hard for the next two years, but you don't want them to keep hitting them hard after that because you don't want Intel to turn into AMD with, you know, like a $5 stock price and releasing chips they're selling at cost, barely able to make anything. You don't want that. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great weekend.